Hey there guys, Jordan in the know here, and if you don't already know yet, the people at Cyanogen have been working hard and tightening the code and pushing out Cyanogen Mod 12 nightlies to supported phones. And luckily for us, the Cyanogen Mod 12 treatment has been given to the OnePlus One, which means that OnePlus One owners out there are going to get the pure, raw lollipop experience and optimization to match. So at this moment, Cyanogen Mod 12 is running the latest version of Android 5.0.2 Lollipop, which means that you are going to get all of the 5.0 features like Project Volta, the new Android runtime, and of course, material design slathered all over the place, not to mention some of Cyanogen Mod's own features like the equalizer and the new theme engine. I want to talk about one of the more intriguing features about this ROM first, Nightly Updates. Now this isn't a joke, that's the actual name, this is the Nightly's edition of Cyanogen Mod, which means that it's still quote quote in development and that you will receive updates every day. Each of these updates won't really be in the visuals department but just little tweaks in the code and you'll n pretty much never see it. It'll just make the code more efficient. You don't have to update every day. I update my phone to the latest nightly version every three or four days but it's still really nice to have that option. Even though the updates will make the code more efficient, keep in mind that there will still be some bugs and that major features will be added every once in a while. So for the past three weeks or so, I've been running Cyanogen Mod 12 on my OnePlus One, and the bugs that you're going to find aren't really going to be any major bugs. The only bugs that I've really experienced is maybe weaker Wi-Fi reception, uh, some days I don't receive MMS messages, and usually these get fixed within the next version of the Nightlies. And that's really the worst of it. If you don't mind bugs, then the rest of Cyanogen Mod will easily become an Android lover's dream. There's an elegant style of material design all over the place, but it's kind of hard to explain material design. Some describe it as giving software physical properties, others call it an iOS 7 ripoff. I call it Unity and a great model for developers to design their apps after. For years, iOS has had a common design language, and even when they transitioned from skeuomorphic to flat, developers still had a model to base their apps off of, and I see the same reasoning behind material. And it's really a welcome change. Animations tuck away specific features and toggles that don't need to be seen at that very moment, while keeping everything looking simple and clean. And the cart style animations give Lollipop a feeling of uniqueness and almost excitement. Notifications wisp away in a smooth animation, and pretty much everything that you touch will have some sort of animation to follow after it. Performance wise, Cyanogen Mod is just as fast as you would expect it to be, and handles material design quite well. Transitions and animations are pretty smooth, but YouTube still takes a long time to open. But the real story in Cyanogen Mod is its features, and that's kind of what it's most notorious for anyways. So I guess the best place to start concerning features is the theme store. It's back from Cyanogen Mod 11, and it's pretty awesome. Right now, every theme only changes the colors associated with material, where before the themes could change the entire look of the apps and the drop-down menus, but it's still in beta, and I expect developers to start getting creative and change their course very soon. Something interesting that we saw from Cyanogen Mod 11S was gesture shortcuts, and they return as an official CM12 feature. So if your phone has capable display sensors, you can draw letters and gestures on the screen to do things like play music, activate the camera, and use the flashlight. Another feature that I want to say originated in Cyanogen Mod 11S was the ability to change between software and hardware buttons, which is now in CM12, alongside the ability to customize other functions of the software keys. We also have the ability to mess with the display settings in order to change the color hue to get the perfect look. We also see the return of the built-in equalizer, which, with the right pair of headphones, can drastically change the way you hear your music. And one last feature that I feel like should be mentioned is the performance tab. This gives you the option to run your phone in either power save or performance mode. Power save mode runs the GPU, graphics processor, and other components at a lower speed in order to conserve battery life. And performance mode increases the speed of these things, which will make your phone run faster, but will also drain battery. And benchmarks don't lie. With power save mode, I was getting a score of under 30,000, which is the same score that I would expect from low to mid-range phones. And with performance mode on, I was getting around double that, rivaling the Note 4 and the Mi 4. So back in the day when I was scared to install Cyanogen Mod, my one fear in particular was the idea that the apps and accessories that I normally use with my Android phone wouldn't be compatible when using Cyanogen Mod. But after using CM11S on the OnePlus One, that made me bold enough to try it for myself. And after using different versions of Cyanogen Mod for months now, I have to say that there's really no worry at all. Everything is stable and most importantly works. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data, everything works just as if this was software from Apple or Samsung. 
Smartwatches and Bluetooth speakers will connect without a problem, and most, if not all, apps are just as compatible. And speaking generally here, if you end up installing CyanogenMod and decide you want to go back to original software, almost every manufacturer has a tool called a ROM Update Utility, or RUU for short, which is a program that you install in your computer, plug in your phone, and the utility does the rest for you so you can be back to stock in no time. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm truly sorry that it took so long. I wanted to spend some genuine time with CyanogenMod to know what I was talking about before I just threw out a random video. So again, I apologize. This took genuine time and genuine analysis. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave your opinions on what you think about Cyanogen because I'm curious what you guys are thinking and I'll respond to every comment that I see. But anyways guys, this has been Jordan in the Know. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.